everyone, and welcome to the ComQuest Hope Discovered Podcast. My name is Bill. Whether your journey happens to be one of mental health, addiction, trauma, whatever it may be, what we like to say here is that recovery is possible. What that recovery may be for one individual versus another may be different, but the point that we really like to share is that a better life is possible. A lot of times we will have guests on this program share their personal journey, and sometimes we will have professionals from uh, the, the recovery community come in and share what they do, and that's exactly what we have for you today. What we are going to talk about is our supported employment program. Our supported employment services provide assistance, education of subjects related to employment, and connections to local employers for those with a mental health diagnosis. We have two guests for you today. One is Philip Pascal, and he is our employment specialist. Philip, welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you. Absolutely. Also with us is Tanya Wilder, who is a supported employment specialist with the program. Tanya, thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. Tanya, I will start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what your mission is here at ComQuest. What brought you here? I have been working in mental health for about 11 years prior. Mm -hmm. And being that it was not in Stark County, opportunity came up where I was able to apply for a position here at ComQuest and did. And even though I was a different position, Mm -hmm. I was asked about supported employment and was offered the opportunity to interview. And once I was involved in the program, because obviously I was hired, I was involved in the program. Well, I am happy to be a part of the program because I enjoy what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And I learned a lot about helping others as I also had a transition in life where I was also job searching and it was all around the same time. So coming here, learning things that I did not know mm-hmm. about interviewing, mm-hmm. talking to employers, job searching. It was it was fun Absolutely. and enjoyable to learn. Yes. And then I was able to project that onto my clients as well and support them. That's wonderful. Philip, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how you got involved uh, with working in this program. Well, I'm originally from uh, Dayton, spent six years in the military. And so I came to the Canton area in 2007 as a full time pastor. Mm -hmm. And so one day while I was sitting in my office uh, at the church, someone came to me and told me that uh, the agency was looking for employees to work in their employment program. And so I gave it some thought and uh, contacted the supervisor of the employment program, which at the time was Bernice Poor. And so I was hired part-time as a contractor. Mm -hmm. And so they currently had had uh, two full-time employees who uh, later resigned. And so uh, Bernice was in the process of hiring uh, some full-time employees. And she asked me if I would consider it. I told her, well, no, you know, I'm pastoring full-time and things like that. And so after a couple of days, I went back and told her that uh, I would go ahead and accept it full-time. Mm-hmm. And so God opened that door and I've been here uh, ever since. Well, we're certainly glad to have you. When people ask you, Philip, I'll stay with you on this. Uh, when people ask you simply, what is the overall strategy or goal of a supported employment? What does it do? Supported employment strives to link our clients uh, to competitive employers. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we help clients Uh, learn resume writing. We help clients learn interviewing techniques. We help clients obtain and maintain employment. And so we try to work with them on job getting and job keeping skills. And so our overall aim is to strive to get as many clients employed as possible. Great. Tanya, do you want to add anything to that? 
Pretty much the same thing. Um, just really developing those skills. Sure. Um, helping people to determine what they want to do. Right. And something that they'll enjoy doing. Sure. What are some of the forms of the services that uh, supported employment uh, provides? You touched on some of them. Uh, I would say out of, out of the ones that are most important, would it be resume writing, uh, uh, identifying barriers to employment? What are some of the most important things, Tanya, that you try to get across to your clients? Um, resume writing is important. Presentation, being able to interview, being able to talk to an employer with confidence, knowing that, this is the job that you want, and this is the job that you're capable of doing. Mm-hmm. A lot of times clients may not even understand when they come to us that they have the abilities to do certain jobs. Mm-hmm. So we research with them. We'll talk about jobs. We'll visit in the community. Yeah. We'll go out and, and just kind of walk in and through a place. Sometimes we'll see individuals that are working And if our clients have that interest, then we'll approach a client, I mean, a um, worker sometime, ask questions, strike up a conversation. But mainly it's just really engaging our clients in the community so that they'll understand opportunity that's out there. Yeah. You brought up an excellent point with that community. A lot of times they may not even be aware of the skills that they have. They just have trouble connecting the dots. Philip. Let me switch to you on this. Um, helping somebody who's in recovery, you know, has a certain amount of criteria, a certain amount of challenges. How do you help them connect the dots in terms of, you know, they might feel that they are, they're, they're not capable and they don't realize that maybe they have really good writing skills or they're just, they're just likable and they, they would be great as, a, you know, working in the, behind the counter somewhere. Um, how, how do you help them connect the dots? That has to be a, 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 my, one of the challenges, one of the real talents that you must have. Well, we talk about strengths, weaknesses, barriers. And so we have a form that's called an initial job search form. And so on that form, it, it, it talks about, uh, what job would you like to have? What type of job and what type of employer and things of like that? And so we uh, explore a lot of opportunities and discussing their barriers helps us to narrow down what they like to do. Mm, interesting. What would be, uh, Philip, I'll stay with you on this. Uh, what would be the ideal candidate for the program? And I know there's some eligibility requirements. For example, you have to be a Stark County resident. Uh, what are some of the other criteria that you have to follow to get someone in the program? You have to be at least 18 years of age, have a diagnosis of major depression, schizophrenia, schizoaffective, uh, or bipolar. Okay. Okay, and you have to be willing to work. Yeah. Have to be. Oftentimes, uh, we get clients who think that we have jobs to give, and we explain to them, we help you obtain the skills. And a working phone number is always, always helpful. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Now, clients can also have a um, drug or alcohol diagnosis. However, if they don't have the mental health diagnosis that we mentioned, then they're not eligible for the program. Okay, I understand. You know, that's interesting. You mentioned about a working phone number. Uh, I hear this from a lot of employers uh, throughout the community at large that nobody answers the phone anymore. (laughs) You know, uh, so that's just uh, one of the things. I mean, if I had just applied for a job, (laughs) be making sure that I answered the phone as much as possible. Uh, I'm sure that's one of the things that you discuss. I'll I'll toss this to, uh, to both of you. Um, how does someone enter the program? Uh, for example, uh, ComQuest clients may ask their provider, a counselor for a referral. Uh, what are some of the ways that uh, people can get in the program? Well, that I mean, that is the process that they definitely would have to be linked up in services. And once the referral is made, then that is either assigned to myself or either Philip. And that's how we engage with the clients then. But one of the things that um, Philip had mentioned was about the working phone number, but also working with our clients is also very important for the paper applications to be legible. Mm -hmm. 
And so I I do kind of stress that with my clients that we have to make sure that employer can read that resume because otherwise yours is just going to be slid over to the side and then moving to the next individual. And I've had clients that said that, oh, okay, and they're willing to work on that area because those have been reasons why some had not been able to get jobs because they may have been bypassed. But yeah, but just refer let me ask you both this, uh, and Tanya, I'll stay with you on this. Uh, this is kind of an impromptu question. Uh, in years past, for example, uh, with all that we do here at Conquest with addiction and, and other things, uh, and when an employer found out that a potential employee, uh, someone who had applied for a job, had an, had an addiction issue, uh, that was a red flag for them. Uh, same with mental health. But now that stigma is starting to change. And especially since there's so many uh, employers out there that can't find reliable candidates to come in for a job. Tanya, have you noticed that that stigma, that that barrier has gotten any better in recent years? Yes. Um, just since I've been here, um, it's been go- it's eight years or going on eight years this year. And I've noticed a change. Um, I think it's a great thing that we have so many people who are public figures, celebrities who have came forward and acknowledged and said, you know, I'm struggling with this. I have this going on in my life um, with depression and, you know, so forth. So when we're dealing with employers and talking to our employers, I've had the opportunity to even have employers who have had those struggles, who've had challenges in life. And if a conversation is because we also recognize that our client's privacy should be respected. And some are very open about what they're dealing with and then others are not. But when we're in the community and we're talking to employers, you want to strike up those relationships because that help our clients when we're looking for a place for them to go to. We have those relationships established. So the employers sometimes understand I had some challenges. I dealt with depression. I lost somebody. I I experienced heartbreak or different things that went on. And and if it wasn't them, it's somebody they knew. And 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 so we want to be empathetic toward those needs in the community. It's not just them, it's us. And it changes the whole thing. Well, one of the uh important pieces is disclosure. When we meet with employers, we do not disclose uh, about a client's situation, but we always talk with our clients about their willingness to disclose that they may have a, a mental health diagnosis or substance abuse issue. And it's always been my experience that employers are more willing to work with an employee when they know that that employee has disclosed uh, that they have a mental health issue as opposed to not disclosing because I've seen situations where uh, clients uh, obtained employment, but then all of a sudden their symptoms begin to flare up and they started missing work, but they had not disclosed to that employer. And so uh, I would meet with the employer and the client and then the employer would say, had I known, I could have done things differently. Yeah. So disclosure is very important. Um, speaking of uh, being assessed for the program, Philip, uh, what are some of the things that someone can expect when they come into the uh, program or trying to come into the program and they're going to be uh, to be assessed for the program? What can they expect? Well, they can expect to be treated with dignity. They can expect Uh, one-on-one, the best services that we can apply. They can expect regular uh, communication uh, via letters, phone calls, in person. They can expect to uh, have their interviewing techniques uh, worked on if they need assistance, learning how to navigate uh, the computers to complete applications. Uh, We help them with that. They can expect Um, that we're going to meet with uh, employers individually as well as we're going to meet with employers with the client. You know, they can expect that if they have uh, problems getting to work, we're going to arrange for them to be able to get to work. 
if they need assistance with proper attire. You know, we talk about grooming. And so we're going to uh, address things that are going to help them be able to help themselves. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Tanya, I'll throw to you on this to to kind of tie things together. We often hear at ComQuest, I I guess our slogan, that's probably not a good term, but kind of maybe our, the, the phrase that we often use is that hope happens here. So uh, toward the end of this podcast, I always ask people to um, give a message of hope. And anybody who's been through, let's say, some sort of a journey uh, regarding mental health or something similar, they can often get into this rut that no one, everyone's going to think I'm a bad person and no one's ever going to want to hire me. Uh, My life is what it is. It's never going to get any better, but that's not true. What would be your message of hope to people in that position in the community at large when it comes to how you can, how you can actually get a job and and make a better life for yourself? When I'm talking to clients that have that mindset at that time, I'm going to encourage them. I'm going to tell them who they are as an individual and that they each have qualities They each have skills, very unique. Any way that I can pump them up, (laughs) if we're saying, I'm going to I'm going to celebrate them and I'm going to let them know, you know, that we're here for them. Supported employment is here. ComQuest is here. The counselors, I love the collaboration. We have some wonderful counselors, caring counselors. Our staff, from the minute that they walk in in the front door, there's an engagement even then. And I know my coworkers, there's a scripture in the Bible that so says, know them that labor among you. I know some of my coworkers. So when individuals come into the building and they meet in the front, those faces that they're seeing up front, they're engaging to them and welcoming to them, knowing some of them, even getting to know them by name so that they can feel welcome when they come in here. And then we're here to walk them through the journey, to sit down and talk and listen. We listen because we want to hear their story. We want to hear what the challenges are that they're facing and why they think that they can't do something and how we can help them to do it. So if it means taking this slow and walking with them and discussing the barriers, as Philip had already mentioned, then that's what we're going to work with them on. Yeah. That's a great message because listening is so important. Uh, it, it can be something as uh, someone like myself going to, to the doctor. And when you have a doctor who's just listening to your symptoms and they're going to write you a, a prescription and, and move on to the next, you don't feel like that, that person's listening to you. Um, and you feel so much more cared for when, when they really make it about you and what you need. Uh, Philip, I'm, I'm sure you want to follow up on that. Well, not only do we have great counselors, we have great case managers. Mm -hmm. And so we often meet with the case managers. We work in the same suite with them, uh, with a lot of them. We meet with the counselors. And so, like Tanya said, we try to encourage them. And one thing we do is try to tell them, you don't have to be what others say you are. And so we're non-judgmental We try to encourage them. As a matter of fact, we try to encourage them by keeping their appointments with their counselor if they have a counselor, case manager, if they're on medication to take their medication as prescribed. And so uh, we try to just get them to see this, to give us an opportunity to help them because sometimes they feel defeated. And we often tell them, you're not in this by yourself. You know, we're here to work with you uh, and we encourage you to work with us. And I often tell I often tell clients that their success depends on how they engage in the program. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's true of so many things in life. I mean, what you get out of something is, is, is what you put into it. 
Uh, I want to thank you both so much. Uh, we've been talking to Philip Pascal, employment specialist, and Tanya Wildler, uh, supported employment specialist here at ComQuest. Thank you so much uh, for what you do, most importantly, because what you do is, is I know it can be difficult some days, but it comes with rewards. And uh, we talk so much about working for a nonprofit without going through the economics of it. People are here because they want to be. This is a mission that you take on because you want to be here. And uh, we are so grateful to have a, a staff like you guys uh, who do this work. Thank you so much for doing that. And thank you for coming on our podcast and sharing uh, what you do. And I'm glad Philip brought up our case managers here, as well as our nursing staff, because our case managers are awesome. And they really work and engage with us when it comes to our clients. Absolutely. And that helps us. Absolutely. Your team. We have a great team here at ComQuest. Uh, we really do. And uh, that's one of the things about a, a culture of a, of a nonprofit, especially one that has the pillars that we do, which is mental health, addiction, and social outreach. Um, people want the mission to be successful because they care about the community. Uh, and here again, thank you both so much for sharing uh, uh, all this information and your time today. Thank you. thank you for having us. Absolutely. If you would like more information about what we've discussed on, on today's podcast, along with anything uh, about what we do here at ComQuest, I would direct you to ComQuest.org. That's C-O-M-M-Q-U-E-S-T dot org. ComQuest.org. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast today. And until next time, thank you very much for listening and have a great week.